time, Indigo, and we all know what time it is. Ready or not, it's Goosebumps time. Just in case you need a refresher, I would recommend going back to the first video of the series in order to get an idea of what happens next, as well as the obligatory spoiler alert. Here come books 34 to 36. Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes is exactly what the title implies. Joe and Mindy Burton hate their dad's new set of lawn gnomes, and it's so embarrassing to have them in the yard. Also, Mr. McCall is their neighbor, and he's a very cantankerous individual. He and Mr. Burton are always trying to outdo one another to grow the biggest vegetables in their garden for the annual garden show. Mr. McCall hates their dog, Buster, and has a son they call Moose. All the kids are scared of him, so you'd think he'd probably be the scariest thing in this book, but let me tell you, that is not the case. I think these kids hurt the gnomes' feelings by saying they were ugly because they wreck people's property at night, specifically Mr. McCall's prized melons. Each time something happens, one of the children notices evidence that the gnomes did it, though of course the parents won't believe it at all. It takes some convincing, but Joe and Mindy get Moose to come and watch the gnomes after dark, even though he's doubtful they will move, but they certainly do. The gnomes realize they are being watched and they capture Mindy. As they carry her away, they tell her that they are mischief elves, and it's in their nature to cause a ruckus everywhere they go. They trick the children into going down into a basement where a bunch of other gnomes are waiting to play with them. Mindy tries to get Buster to come scare the gnomes by blowing a dog whistle. To her surprise, the gnomes freeze. Not because of Buster, but because of the whistle. They get away and some time goes by. Unfortunately, their dad finds a weird gorilla to have at the house and it winks. I'm honestly left wondering how big these gnomes were. In the book it says the kids could barely move them because they were so heavy, but the lawn gnomes I know aren't quite that big. It was a good story, I just couldn't visualize it. Next up is A Shocker on Shock Street. This is such a good one. It sounds like the universe of Aaron and Marty. There's this movie series all about Shock Street. Aaron explains to the reader that her dad is an engineering genius and he makes robotics and special effects for movie set tours. Aaron and Marty are lucky enough to test out a brand new tour for Shock Street. Aaron asks if her mom could come, but dad seems confused. Marty is always trying to be the brave one, and Aaron wants to tear his pride down a little bit by having him admit he is scared. Regardless, shenanigans ensue as the tram takes several twists and turns through some very creepy places like a cave full of worms and spiders. They know all the different villains and situations they will experience since they are such big fans of the Shock Street movies. Only the animatronics, like the mantis they encounter, seem to be alive. Aaron and Marty finally escape the cave and make their way through a cemetery filled with zombies. They even find some werewolves and Aaron tries to take the mask off of one of them, only to prove her suspicion. Everything on the tour is very real. Even more hijinks ensue and they finally find someone who directs them to go into a house. They were supposed to be filming something but the children were never informed by their dad. Marty runs into the house and Aaron tries to save him but it doesn't work. She turns to see a man and pleads with him for help only to be shut down. You see, their dad was actually the one who programmed them. He realized they were having programming issues because Erin asked about her mom, even though she doesn't have one. Things weren't working out exactly as he envisioned, but he will tinker with his robot children some more. Finally, we have The Haunted Mask 2. Steve and Chuck are sick of the first graders they call animals, and they want to scare them so that they will leave the boys alone. Steve remembers that super scary mask Carly, Beth, and Sabrina had last Halloween, and he wants to know where they got it. The girls strongly warn them not to mess around with those masks, but the boys bully them into telling them where the mask came from. The boys make their way to the party place and sneak into the basement to find a bunch of disgusting masks. 
The store owner catches Steve and tells him the masks aren't for sale, so Steve has no choice but to take one and run. Of course, once he puts it on, he immediately realizes something is wrong. He desperately tries to find Carly Beth since she's the only person who would know what to do. She reiterates the plot point from the last book that the only a symbol of love will break the curse. This mask is really affecting Steve because he's beginning to lose his strength. They try a few things to break the curse, but they don't work. With the last of his willpower, Steve and Carly Beth go back to the basement of the store. They find a bodysuit that appears to match the mask, and when Carly puts it near Steve, the mask comes off. Unfortunately, Chuck surprises them, and he has another mask on. And there's three more books finished. If you like this series, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so very much for watching.